Welcome to the Style Happy Hour. It is Tuesday evening. It is 8 p.m. And you have stumbled your way into the Style Happy Hour. This is where we talk about anything and everything in the tile and stone industry. We love it. We know you love it. And when I say we, I am speaking about my good friend that you can see clearly tonight. John Tedesco got a new camera. We actually can tell what he looks like. He's not from London. He's not in the fog. Welcome, John, to the happy hour. Happy hour. I don't know why, but you were muted. Oh, my goodness. That's all right. That's all right. We've only done this 32 times. Who knows what's going on? Um, But it's good to see you. I can hear you, and I can see you clearly. Welcome everybody on TikTok that have joined us. If you see the Tile channel, that little TV up there, that is John, and you can't see him live because he doesn't have enough followers. So on TikTok, you need to jump in and follow John on the Tile channel so that we can do the show together, just like we're doing on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, which is now X, Facebook group, all those other things. Right, John? Where, uh, yeah, I would love to get some people uh, where I could broadcast this on TikTok. This would be great. I'm glad to piggyback on yours. But yeah, we have all those streaming surface. Uh, oh my God, all those streaming venues that we're, that we're on and now TikTok. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the Tile Happy Hour. It's Tuesday. It's October 17th. It is, I think I know what episode it is. It is episode 31 of the Tile Happy Hour. Am I right? It is. You got a clear camera and now you can't talk. talk yeah, about exactly. Our streaming services. I was like, well, screaming services? I don't know what that is. But you can't uh, Aaron have, you can't have it all. just joined us on, um, on TikTok. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. What an upgrade. Uh, you're Now we're going to have to start competing with um, camera views and just see who can outspend each other in gear. It's amazing. The technology that's available. I know... We've been talking about upgrading my studio a little to a little better webcam and just hooked it up. And this is the first viewing of it. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's really good. Big camera. difference. What I am excited about is, you know, I'm a, I, I, not necessarily a tech nerd, but I do like techie stuff. And um, I found the camera. I sent it to you. And I swear within like four hours you had it already that well that's what amazes me all right so so you've been <laughs> so craig's been trying to tell me to get a, a webcam because i've been just working off my laptop camera which is a horrible camera it looked like i was in a fog but i was like all right maybe episode 10 episode 15 episode 20 20 so yesterday he sends me a text uh an amazon link to this webcam and there was like a few versions of it i literally clicked on it I said, yeah, I could afford that. Clicked it, went into Amazon, bought it in less than a minute of after you sent it to me. And then it gave me the option. Do you want it delivered? Now I'm in New York and we have a lot of Amazon activity going on. And they said, do you want it delivered between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, which would have been this morning. So I said, yeah, definitely. Maybe I can use it. For this show. I didn't think I was going to have it for, for this show. I, I had no, no doubts you were going to get Yeah. And, and then I would say two hours later, it said Amazon nine stops away. <laughs> they actually got it on a truck be- before the morning truck, and it was at my house at 8 p.m. We ordered it at 4 p.m. I mean, my Chinese food was that quick, so it's, it was insane. And we hooked it up, got all the tech stuff figured out, and uh, here I am live. And, live, and, uh, and we can see you. We, I mean, we actually had a conversation, does his shirt look good? Normally, you can't tell. It doesn't matter. <laughs> So. I, it shows I didn't even have clothes on. You didn't even know it was so bad. Nobody knew. And nobody knew. <laughs> that, exactly. that, that's great. And uh, as John said, this is episode 32. We got a whole bunch of Wait episodes. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I said 31. Oh, you did say 31. Does that mean it's 31 or 32? <laughs> it's 31. I think it's 32. Oh. I think last week was 31. And uh, my computer's going haywire, so I'm scared yeah. to touch anything. That's so good. I cannot confirm. All right. If it's 31 or 32. But um, whether whether you're watching us, wherever you're watching us, uh, we've got all those episodes on all of our social media channels. I'll throw those up on the screen real quick. 
you can find all the old episodes, but I hope right now you're watching live. You're a live and watching live. And tonight we're going to talk about a pretty popular subject, the cleaning and maintenance of ceramic tile. So I know there's questions out there. I know we're going to get some. Um, and uh, so if you want to, if you have a question about cleaning and maintenance of your tile or a tile you've installed, shoot it over. We're monitoring the comments coming in. If you're not watching live, still ask the question. We will answer you. Um, I tell you, John, it thinks, and you said this earlier, I think when we, when we were talking pregame, I've had more comments over the last week than I've had ever since uh, we started the show. Yeah, it's been, there's been a lot of um, engagement. A lot of people have found their way to our channels and to our shows either live or, you know, through the uh, rebroadcast on the social media channels. And um, it's great. I just like to help people the same as you love to talk tile, love to, love to talk grout, love to talk sealers. Uh, and as much as I love baseball and football, I, I think I'd rather talk tile. And that's what we hear every Tuesday night on the tile happy hour. Now I want to know where you guys are watching from. So if you're listening to this live or even on a rebroadcast, Type in your comments where you're watching from, what town, what city, what country, wherever you're from. We'd love to hear from you. We'll give you a shout out. And we're really excited about tonight's show because if you're not a tile nerd or a tile geek, this is going to be really boring. But if you like tile, <laughs> if you're in the industry, uh, you may have find it intriguing. And Craig, I always love talking to you because, and this is how this podcast started. Craig and I being colleagues, we've we've had the need to talk to each other on and off during the course of the week. And every time we got on the phone, it was about business and it was about something in the industry. And we would just not only talk about the immediate purpose of the phone call, we would just go off on a tangent on like whatever tile. Yeah. And, I, and I would say, Hey, what about this? And you give me your input and like, wow, this sounds like a podcast, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, um, yeah, we went all out because I was thinking podcast was just audio, right, on Spotify. Yeah, which, which, and, which yeah we're not on yet. Uh, yeah, live stream is is I I don't know depends on who you listen to, I guess. But you know, the live stream, the video is the way to go. Uh, obviously, the audio we can strip it and put it on a podcast too. But I think you really want to look at us. I mean, we're good looking gentlemen. I mean, we're both. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're taken. You know, and but you know, you can still dream. Yeah. Well, I want to give cheers to you, Craig. I don't know if you have your drink. I've got uh, my, even though the Wolfpack performed terribly uh, this week, I've got my Wolfpack uh, oh, my sweet tea here. And yep. uh, so, yeah, cheers to you. Uh, cheers to all those out there in, the, in happy hour land. Um, it, it's <laughs> been, it's been a crazy week. And um, this week we, we didn't plan on talking about this, but uh the total solutions is actually going on. I don't, John, I know you're a coverings man, but the total solutions plus, uh, is I think starts tomorrow. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great show, especially for, um, distributors and, and those, uh, it's a wonderful learning opportunity. Um, they didn't invite us to do the podcast there, so we're not there, but, uh, we do wish everybody well that is traveling, um, down there this week. And um, if you're there, let us know. Give us a shout out. Um, ask them why we're not there broadcasting live and uh, let us know what you learned because it's a great learning opportunity. Have you yes, ever been? So, to no, I haven't been to that to that at all. I'm actually pretty intrigued by it because I see there's a lot of collaborators like TCNA mm -hmm. uh, and C CTDA and there's two or three others, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, CTEF is there. Um, it's a uh, when last time I went, and it's been several years now, um, I, but I probably should go just because of what I do day in and day out. I think it's an opportunity. Um, it, it's a little bit uh, more in depth and more intimate than coverings. It's not as big. Um, I think it's pretty regional to just the continental United States. Right. But, um, it's it's a great show and um, some great learning opportunities that are going to come out of there. I, I wonder, do all the organizations that are participating, do you think they have their like annual board meeting or powwow yeah, I, there? I would assume so, yeah. 
Yeah. I think uh, originally it was for distributors only. Uh, I think that's kind of how it started. The well, CTDA, I think it was a CTDA show, right? I mean, I did yeah. I, I, decades ago, I attended a CTDA show. It was more of a vendor mm-hmm. show yeah. with a lot of technical stuff. And now that the other trade shows have become so huge, the coverings in the US and the others, Trisai and Chevy Sama, I think that this show now is super focused on the associations, the nuts and bolts, Mm -hmm. and like, and then a deep dive into the topics that, you know, uh, really interest the members of, of those organizations. A lot of technical stuff, stuff, a lot of specification stuff. I'm assuming there's workshops. I'm assuming there's uh, seminars, things like that. I didn't even know where it's held. Do you know where it's held this year? I don't know. I do have a copy of uh, this month's tile letter. I bet it's in there. Yeah, I'd like to know. I I may be able to find it. Um, But I thought a few years ago, I thought that it was going to combine with coverings. I I felt like, mm, you know, it's not getting the attention that's coverings getting. Um, But, you know, I'm I'm really, I really, I think I'd like to really go to that show. I think it's really cool. I think, I think everyone has found their place and I think it's pretty cool because if if they did this ad coverings, I think there's a lot of core content that they're going to be talking about at this total solutions show right? that they wouldn't get to. There's just too much distraction. Everyone would want to get around to the other things that are happening. Now, all those other organizations, or at least most of them participate in coverings in their own fashion, right? They have their own booths. They have, uh, you know, setups with different types of installation seminars and with manufacturers. So I kind of feel it's too much. So I think it's a good decision and uh, let's get that on the radar. Maybe we'll do it next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got the new uh, tile letter here and um, total. It, it, oh, it's in Louisiana. Okay. See, we should have gone. I've yeah. never been to, I've never been to New Orleans. You know what? Um, you know, it's, this week, I think you could hop on a plane and get there. <laughs> true. I got a lot to do. I, um, right. uh, John, uh, we, uh, I'm not here next week. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you have some real important stuff to do. So Craig, not only being the tile maven that he is, he's also a pretty darn good guy, part of the community, but he's part of the world community. And wow. my understanding is that, uh, you do some really, really good work down in, uh, in Nicaragua. So tell us all about that. Yeah, yeah. So next week I'll be traveling with a mission group down to uh, Nicaragua, and uh, this will be my second year going there. And last year we had a group of I think thirty five, and we built wow. nine houses in four days. Wow! And uh, it, it was pretty amazing. Um, this year we have a little bit smaller group. Uh, the the other uh, people that were from Virginia aren't coming back this week they're coming another time so we're slated to build six houses and the crazy thing is is this uh it's called project the hope project which is right i've got it right over there um the statistics show that the mortality rate of infants go up by 80 percent when they have a hard floor to sleep on and the area where we're going is um there people are sleeping in the dirt And um, this organization comes in and a thousand dollars buys a house, uh, erects the house and feeds the family for six months for a thousand dollars. And the greatest thing about that is how is that how is that possible? Well, things are cheaper other places. um, And, you know, our labor is free. So that, that labor is free. We do have laborers that are Nicaraguan. Um, Locals. Yeah, folks. And, and they kind of lead us and we're the grunt workers. I mean, I, I, last year I actually floated a concrete floor. I, I, and, and these houses, when you, it's a house, really, it's a 12 by 12 concrete slab with concrete walls and a tin roof. But right. that's enough to raise the mortality rate that much. It, it's an amazing. amazing journey. Um, I'm proud to be a part of, of the Hope Project. And uh, if you want, if you're Is interested at all, uh, you can follow me on my personal social media, which is uh, uh, my YouTube channel is at Craig Cahoon. 
amazingly. And uh, I'll give, give some updates. But thanks, John, for bringing that up. And um, so, yeah, so next week I'll be in South America. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Well, we wish you well. Thanks for uh, doing that. That's amazing. Is there a donation site on your uh, on your Instagram? Like a- yeah, there there is. Uh, it's called the Hope Project. I'll put it in the chat uh, on, on one of the banners and um, get people connected if if they want to uh, if they want to participate. Absolutely, um, you can definitely uh, donate. And they do these projects all over the world. Um, Nicaragua is just one place they do it, but uh, just really just trying to give back and and save kids, man. That's amazing. Well, you're definitely doing you're definitely doing some good work there. So, what other skills do you have besides tile, floating floors, uh, carpentry? I, I, I can talk. Okay, I got it. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm I'm extremely handsome, but really, yeah. other than that, that's all I got. <laughs> do you know Not how to clean, Do you know how to clean floors? No, I don't know how to clean floors. And that's why I'm hoping today you're going to be able to tell me. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this is a kind of an extension. Well, this is an interesting extension because we've brought this up on a recent show. And then also we've had a few offline questions and we had a conversation about a client. And so that's how this topic developed for tonight because tile and stone are such great products. They, they, they really have so many benefits to them. And they do need a minimum amount of maintenance, but they there is there are maintenance things that you need to do, and there's things you should do, things you shouldn't do. Uh, so compared to all the other building products out there, or you know, like uh, some other materials, tile really is very durable and it's very pretty much maintenance free. But we say that loosely because there are some things you need to do, particularly particularly in in instances where they're in commercial applications. And maybe that's the first thing we should talk about when you're in a commercial. Well, I think we can talk about the very beginning yeah. because a, a lot of the questions that I get is the tile installer never finishes the tile and they've left a mess. And um, the crazy thing about installing tile is when the floor is wet, it looks amazing. But then once the floor dries and the guy that installed that tile leaves, there could be, residue from the grout or the thin set left on the tile that you yeah know, you, you you've got to fix that first because right now you you haven't even got the zero you're still um negative they haven't zero. even delivered a finished product yet correct and, and, and that's really yeah i could visualize the guy like having his helper sponge down the floor while he's getting paid and while he's getting cash yeah. and the floor looks really good and it's shiny and then yep. you walk out and then the moisture starts evaporating. And then next thing you know that there's a film on the tile on the floor or the walls. And it's That's similar right. to picture washing your really beautiful window with soapy water while it's, and you rinse it, but you don't rinse it that well. Mm-hmm. And it looks pretty good. And then what happens is once it evaporates, the moisture evaporates, film is left behind. It's either left over from the cleaning solution itself, or sometimes it's, you know, you have a cleaner that emulsifies the dirt and then the moisture moves around and the dirt comes back. So yeah, square, straight, straight up. Number one, you got to get, you got to leave your customer with the floor that's free of residue, such as mm-hmm. grout residue and thin set residue. There may be a small amount that's allowable. Would you agree with that? I, uh, yes, but in my opinion, as an installer, even if you leave it, you need to come back and get it. Like uh, there's no way to get it off 100% while the floor is wet. Uh, I mean, there is, but it's it's hard to do. But uh, uh, most of the time, once it dries though, and you've done a good job to this point, there's very little left and you can just get that off with a dry cloth most of the time. But you need to do that because what happens if you don't do that then we start working into the actual use of the building and that residue on there starts attracting other stuff because right. it's sticky or porous, unlike the tile. And so then the floor looks dirty. So in my opinion, the installer owes the owner or the um, contractor or whatever, a clean floor finished with no residue on it. 
and and grout haze or residue haze is one of the big terms that everybody uses do you think what's the biggest culprit is it the thin set or is it the grout grout i mean thin set it the only way thin sets an issue is if you really are sloppy and don't know what you're doing um, or, you know, walking across the newly floor with a, your bucket of thin set water. Mainly it's grout. And, and um, the key, and we're not talking about grouting today, we're talking about cleaning, but I think it's important to start here. The key to it is reading the instructions of the grout you're using, no matter what it is, Laticrete, Tech, Bostic, whatever following the directions closely and carefully and the timing instructions. The timing instructions that are on there are critical and that will help you get your floor clean and available to turn over. You, you know, a lot of the installers that I encounter that I know for, for years or decades, you know, they were brought up on certain types of grout. And for many, many years and many decades, grout didn't change much. I mean, there was always changes, right? But it's it's kind of like you know, electronics. Now it's accelerated so much mm. that a tile guy gets on a job. He was not asked to provide the grout. The grout was provided. And next thing you know, they're getting this new wonky grout that they never dealt with before. And yeah. they just, yeah, I know how to do this. Don't worry about it. I don't need to read instructions. And yeah. I think that's where the biggest problems come because they because these grouts may be so sophisticated that the cleaning process is different. It's not harder, Absolutely. right? It's not yeah. necessarily harder or more difficult. It's just different. And there's certain things you need to do and certain things you shouldn't do. So I think that's Perfect. where guys get in trouble. Would you would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, uh, if if you've got a grout, if you've got a grout worth its salt, it's only been around five years. And if your installer says, I've been doing this 20 years, that may be the issue because the grout he's used to is not what you bought. And so if your installer says, don't worry, just clean your floor with muriatic acid after I leave, then you know you got you got an old timer. Big issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, let's talk about that. So you're you're the homeowner and your um, your installer has left and you have a haze and they're not coming back. Here's, here's what you do. First of all, you need to know what grout was used. Um, and uh, that's going to get you to fix the problem. Because if you're trying to, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So you need to clean the grout with something that will clean the grout. So if it's a cement-based grout, you're going to need a different cleaner than if it's epoxy-based grout, you'll need a different cleaner, or if it's a urethane-based grout. So the number one thing is, if you have an issue, know what is in your floor. Know what type of grout was used. Then you can start with uh, cleaning suggestions. You, you know what? That made me think of going down the supermarket aisle, the aisle that sells like the miscellaneous stuff, like a shoelace or mm -hmm. something weird. And there's these little bottles. I think they call it carbonara or carbonara. I don't know what they are. They're little cleaners. Carbonara is like food. That's like yeah, food. well, it's something with a C. And there's these little bottles. And one is like the, they're all to clean stains off your clothes, like spot cleaners. One okay. says for ink. The other one says for fat and oil. And the other one says paint. So if you get a stain on your shirt while you're at a restaurant, you, is, there isn't one bottle that fixes all the problems. You want to right. – so – it's similar to that because if you could take Absolutely. you could you could have a paint stain and and you're on something and you're using a degreaser on it, it it's not going to work. When you get the right product, just bam, it just it works. Um, yeah. Now historically, uh, an acid type of cleaner has worked on a cementitious grout, so like yeah. a white vinegar, and I don't mean. I don't mean full strength. As a matter of fact, I want to clarify something. We talked about in the previous uh, episode, last one or one before, about ammonia. I, I was never talking about a full strength ammonia. I was talking about a bucket of water with some ammonia in it. A tablespoon of ammonia in it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, is would you, would you say that a white vinegar diluted in bucket of water is a possible solution for some types of grout that are out there now? 
Yeah, I mean, if you go back to your basic grouts, which Tom, I'm glad Tom's here. Tom knows about all these things. Um, it has been a lifelong fight. But back in the day, cement grouts were the, uh, were the, that's what everybody used. That was the culprit. And what breaks down cement is acid. And there are different types of acid. Vinegar is one. I mean, uh, just uh, acidic uh, citric acid is another. Um, what my go-to was, was sulfamic acid. Sulfamic acid was kind of a medium uh strength acid it wasn't like muratic and now brick brick layers they'll put muratic acid in their pressure washer and spray the whole outside of the building they put but it in that their coffee will, yeah and drink coffee while doing it um that is really strong now it'll work but um but the crystallized sulfamic acid was my go-to when i had a cement haze and you can buy it in the stores today. And you can, the ones, the tile, let's just clear up one thing. If you've got a tile and grout installation, use a tile and grout cleaner. Right. I, I mean, yes, vinegar from the kitchen will work, but let's use something that's been tested and proven on the tile and grout. So you go to that section whatever store you are, or go to our website, tilebar.com and just order it and we'll ship it to your house um, and uh, fix it with the tile specific cleaner. And yes, so the acidic cleaners are great for cement based grouts. Word of caution, acidic cleaners tarnish metals. Right. So you're in your a bathroom you don't want to get it on the faucet. You don't want to get it on the... Right. Uh, any type of fixture or even glass. I think it may even, may even damage glass. So you have to be really, I'm not sure if it, does. it can, it, it can, it can etch well, it. one thing it can do is etch a polished stone really easily. So right. um, a lot of times uh, people will have a, say you've got a car polished Carrera countertop and you squeeze out a lemon in the wrong place. You can etch your stone that way. Right. Um, so acid does do some, I mean, it's acid. But, so, uh, so you're not uh, recommending a homeowner or a novice play around with crystallized sulfamic acid, are you? I wouldn't recommend it. No, I would. I would go to something a little um, more tame. Uh, maybe a tile and grout acidic cleaner that's in a spray bottle that's already pre mixed. Pre, for pre you. You've never done it before. Um, there's there's one trick that you can do is time. Spray it on. Let it sit. You know, a lot of people want to spray it on and wipe it off and spray it right. on and wipe it off. Well, that's not doing much of anything. Spray it on, let it sit, let it work, let it absorb, then wipe it off. If that doesn't work, try uh, try it again. Uh, Tom recommends SureClean. I don't know SureClean, but... I've works. heard of that. I don't know who makes that. Um, I wonder what's in that SureClean. Now, to what extent... So, it, there's two things here. One is some sort of chemical liquid solution. The other mm -hmm. is elbow grease, right? Or friction or yeah. are we using a sponge? Are you using a scrub pad? Are you using a rag? Like what are you using to clean haze? Now we're not talking about caked on grout that was put down by a real novice that needs a sledgehammer. We're talking about like it looked good when you wiped it and then when it dried, the haze reappeared. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what you don't use, let me warn you, um, is what uh, I saw a picture of our friend down in um, Gary J down in the Baltimore area. He sent me a picture of a job where the uh, installer had used a wire brush on a compact drill. <laughs> so that will get the grout off of your tile. Guaranteed. The top <laughs> layer of the tile. So... I always suggest when um, I always suggest when when cleaning tile use a stiff bristled plastic brush. That's my go to cleaning. Got it. I've got a question here on TikTok, so let me answer that. Um, would there be a difference to clean grout from a porcelain tile than from a glass tile? Um, 
Porcelain and glass in composition are relatively similar. The danger in glass is like John and I talked about earlier, glass can be etched. So uh, if it's got a high gloss finish, if you're using a uh, heavy acidic, uh, it can dull that finish. It'll get it clean, but it could dull it. Do you have any other suggestion there? Um, John? Um, well, um, well, I think you're right because you know the surface, like a glazed tile, is really almost like a glass surface, right? In, in, in yeah, many ways. yeah. So, so the glass and the glaze of a ceramic or porcelain that's glazed are similar. If it's unglazed, it, then it's even less likely to get damaged. A porcelain. Um, no, those are good suggestions. What I do want to mention is what I really think people should avoid is buying stuff off the shelf from the supermarket because. Yeah. Those products scare the heck out of me because these are just chemical companies that just slap on labels. And mm. I mean, how many times have you seen the commercial for like Mop and Glow or something like Mop and Glow? Yeah. And it says for ceramic tile. You put that on ceramic tile, you're you're sliding your ass across that whole floor. I mean, it's yeah. a terrible suggestion to do like Mop and Glow on a port on a ceramic tile on a floor. Yeah. And there's also something called Tilex, which. Last time I checked, which was 10 years ago, that had sulfonic acid in it also, but it has other cleaners in there. So it can work, but the problem with the sulfonic is you're spraying it. You got to really be careful because if you're spraying it in a bathroom, you yeah. have glass doors, you have, you know, chrome fixtures or oh, gold okay. fixtures. So I would, I would really stick with the professional tile manufacturer, you know, a product that's made for the tile industry yeah. because I think those chemical companies – I'm just going to make one up like Dow. I don't know what they make or don't make. Some of these companies just literally just kind of like change some little formulas around, but I really don't think they focus on, you know, the specific on the industry, industry yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I, I, and everything we just said about cement grout, uh, you can apply that to a urethane grout and epoxy grout. It's just different chemicals. If you try to clean your sanded or non-sanded grout haze with an epoxy stripper, it's not going to work. Um, that's why the first order of business is what kind of grout do you have? Let's neutralize it with the appropriate thing. And I agree with John, purchased from a tile specific company. They're going to be the ones that have done the testing on it. They've tested it with the tiles. They've tested it with different droughts. They care about the industry. These other cleaning companies are just trying, not saying anything bad about them. They're just trying to find a one chemical fits all. And I think that's where the segue into um, regular maintenance and other stuff. I think that's where a lot of commercial properties get into trouble. I, I agree with that. This day and age, you really need to be, you really want to protect your investment. You really need to protect your, your clients from, you know, slipping. You don't want to clean it with something that's going to make something slippery. You spend a lot of time. The tile industry works really hard on designing products that have a certain slip resistance to them. And then architects and designers uh, work really hard to get the right product specified. And then you come in and you use the wrong cleaner and it completely it destroys the DCOF and now you have a slippery floor, not because of the tile, because of the product that you cleaned it with and or how you didn't rinse it well enough. Right. Yeah. And um, so the typical scenario I come across and we talked about this this week for one of one of my clients who's really, I feel the top hospitality designer in New York and they design restaurants only and, and hotels. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they visited one of their clients. It was a restaurant pizzeria place in New York and they happened to just be visiting and they were sliding all over the floor with their like sneakers. The job was done like years ago and, yeah. and they were just concerned like, wow, what is going on here? And they called me up and said, John, I really, we need your advice. We want to guide our client. We want to tell them that something is going wrong here because when we picked this tile out, it it met the DCOF. It was suitable and, and now it's not performing. But they knew enough that it wasn't the tile that wasn't performing. Right. It was something after the fact. And I came to you and I know you're actually, even though we have the knowledge of the answer, I know you're working on a little bit more of a deep dive and, and kind of come up with email. Maybe even a bullet. Oh, really? 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but you're right. I and um, I, we talked. We we scooted over this a little bit the last week or the week before. I can't remember. And Tom brought in a brought up a good point um, when we were there. Is you know when you have a complaint, just like uh, you did. Our first tip that uh, some of our superintendents and project managers would do would go, I, uh, I'm sorry you're having this issue. Show me your cleaning closet. And they would go to the cleaning closet and open the door and see the rack of all the cleaning supplies that they have in the mop closet. And nine times out of 10, none of those were tile specific yeah. cleaners. They were just everyday um, cleaners and um, there is a uh, there. There's something going around the other day, the other week that I a different client of ours that said, "Well, no, we hired this company and they clean every night. And the greatest thing is, it's a leave-on cleaner." And I went, <laughs> "Bingo!" <laughs> you know that that is not what your floor needs. That's horrible. That's just like that. That is crazy. Well, yeah, that's the thing when these, you know, chemical companies are trying to just hit everything with a broad stroke where these yeah. cleaning companies come in and either they're doing it because they're naive or they're doing it because they're creating more work for themselves. I tend to think it's the latter where yeah. uh, I had a theory there. Yeah, I had an unglazed porcelain tile installed in my barber shop years ago and and getting my hair cut. The owner was cutting my hair and he says, Hey John, you know, I, got, I love the tile I bought from you, but I really want to make it shiny. I was like, his name was John. Also I was like, John, it's too late. You can't do, you can't add a shine. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. The next time I get my hair cut, he said the same thing to his cleaning company and the floor was shiny and it looked great. It looked great for that 30 days. And then it started getting little crackles and crazes. And then it started peeling up. Like when you get sunburn and your skin starts peeling. And next thing you know, then he paid the guy after two months to strip it off and go back to where it was. And I was just like, you know, it, to me, that was malpractice. They should never have let the guy do that. And uh, I should, let me rephrase that. They shouldn't have done that to him because you know, they, they let him down the wrong path. Yeah. And, and that, you know, cleaning companies, and this is not a bash against cleaning companies, but um, they serve their purpose, uh, but they do get paid by how often they clean. And if if you have a floor that gets dirty every day, the odds are you're going to get a daily cleaning um, contract. But if you have a floor that doesn't get dirty and just, you know, uh, your regular maintenance can just sweep it off, you're only cleaning once a month or maybe every eight weeks or something. And right. uh, leave on cleaners are dangerous for a couple of reasons. For my perspective, it makes the industry look bad um, right. because you have architects and engineers going into buildings and they're like, this floor looked so good when it was new and now it looks terrible. And so what they do is they are trying, then they try to fix that by changing out the, the thing. It also is dangerous, just like you talked about. You went into a pizzeria um, with your daughter and uh, you, it was like an ice skating rink. And that's dangerous and that's a liability to the owner. And the owner thinks, because they don't know any better, they think it's the tile's fault. When in reality, someone has cleaned the floor and they have not rinsed the floor good enough to get the residue of the soap and grease or whatever off of the floor to get back down to the tile. And now, let's dig into ahead. that a little more. So if you, sometimes you could be using the right cleaner and not rinse it properly. Correct. Then let's use the extreme example. Example: You're using the wrong cleaner, like less oil, that's just uh -huh. like an oil base. And there's no such thing as like rinsing. Like once you get that on the floor, it's it's it has it's not soaking in because it's not yeah. wood, right? So it is it's a chore. It's picture washing your windows with like you know an oil cleaner, like a less oil. It just wants to slide around. You literally have to get dry rags and keep wiping it up and wet. And if you don't get it up properly, or then like you said before, the dust 
settles, sticks, the dirt on your feet, the guy walking across with a cart delivering some goods to a pizzeria with a hand truck, and now the wheels are leaving marks on the floor. Yeah. Uh, the shoes from the workers going in and out of the kitchen and the kitchen may have some flour on the floor or dirt on the floor or more grease on the floor. Now they're bringing it in. So you really need like I'm a big fan of just like super hot water and, 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 a, and a cleaner that is not very caustic or harsh as your first line of defense for cleaning tile. Just like, you know, a bucket of water or hot water, maybe a scrub pad on the end of, end of the pole maybe a cleaner like a neutral cleaner ph balance you know try that first and and you'd be surprised how like even at home if i'm cleaning i avoid using the cleaning products i don't think need, things need to be like you know 100 percent sterilized every second of your life hey, we're not eating off the floor well all right so speak for yourself so but anyway <laughs> no but true you're not eating off your floor and so the people that get all because i'm also worried about what you're breathing if you're putting you know, bleach or ammonia or or acid type of cleaners into your floors or walls. It's also going into the air. It's also going into your lungs. So if you could clean something on a regular basis with super hot water, you know, you're not putting your hands in it. Hopefully you have like a, you know, a mop that you can wring out without touching the water. So the hottest water that you could use with some neutral cleaner, pH uh, balanced uh, cleaner, I think that's my first recommendation. The other cleaners are more problem solvers. If you if you if you can't get it something up off the floor, then you need maybe a problem seal. But if you have a product, if you have a tile that has no porosity, I don't know. It, it's topical. That stain is really not stain. It's just stuck. Right. 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 So you just need something to reverse the chemical bond that it has to the tile. It's true. And, and, that's the thing. and I, I will uh, piggyback off what you said and, and um, add into it. If you can evacuate the water, that's the, um, I always tell this story. I went uh, for a problem job. This was a financial um, place, invest money. So they wanted to look really nice, really expensive. So you invest more money, right? So we did, it's like a thousand square foot and it was a, Carrera statuary looking 12 by 24 porcelain tile. Right. They were there a week and they called me and said, something's wrong. This is terrible. It's whatever. So I, of course, after work, I come over there, I meet the maintenance guy and the manager of the building. And just so happens the um, woman that was cleaning the floor uh, was there. And so I was, I talked to the guy. I said, does she clean the floor? Yes. Every night. She cleans it every night. So um, she was about halfway through um, cleaning the floor and I walked over and I said, hey, how are you doing? What are you using to clean the floor? And I looked at her chemicals and they were nondescript. They had no names on them. Um, but then I also looked in her mop bucket and you could not see the bottom of the mop bucket. <laughs> it was terribly dirty. It was it was like your shirt almost. It was black and she still had half of floor to do. And I said, how often do you change your water? And she said, I, I change it twice at the beginning and at the end. <laughs> so she, all she was doing was migrating the dirt from wherever she started to another place. And that is, uh, that's, that's part of the problem. And clean water solve a multitude of sins. But then if you have clean water and, a uh, shop vac or something, uh, a cleaner, a floor scrubber that has a way of sucking the water up off of the floor. That's another um, insurance policy that that water won't evaporate and leave whatever is in there. It gets it off of the floor. Yeah. When, when you're taught, you know, we should mention this very clearly. When you're cleaning tile, you you want to leave very you want to use a use a damp mop you never slopping it on there's no advantage of having a puddle that doesn't do anything all it, all it is is another opportunity for more dirt to be in that puddle of water and then when it evaporates it's yeah. all you're doing is emulsifying the dirt and then letting it letting it stick back on the floor so you really need a a, a damp mop at at best and you need to wring it out really really well and you need to change the water very often 
Yeah, what I tell what I tell clients, customers, and and our colleagues is if you can't see the bottom of the bucket, change the water. That, that's a good rule of thumb. If you can't see the bottom of the bucket, change the water. Tom says a good practice to um, send customers do and don't packages before uh, you do the job covers the liability. Um, you know, so I found this really good mop. You know the mops that you know that you. Um, you get at the supermarket to like yellow and you, you pull the handle in it kind of folds in and squeezes the sponge. Those yeah, are pretty, yeah, yeah. brings the water out. Um, but I found one better. They make this, I forget what it's called there. You put the, the mop in like this little spindle and the mop is actually threads of fabric and you put mm -hmm. it in there and it has a foot pedal and it's only like, My wife has that. yeah, it's only like $40, this thing. And you're using minimal amount of water it's because it's the water's being wrung out every time you put yeah, it in yeah, there yeah. i that i think that's my favorite mop uh buck mop and bucket set I, and, I'm, I'm not a connoisseur of mops but you know what i do like is i like some of our new uh water jet pattern tiles that's from left field <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I thought about that as we're talking about uh, cleaning and um, uh, and things that we like and don't like. And I didn't want to move forward without um, you telling me about uh, a product that you found in the warehouse. Oh, well, yes. But I have to tell you something. This is an encore presentation. This video is from 2020. Oh, so this is an oldie but goodie. Okay, this is well, a let's, product let's highlight. What, let's check it out. Let's see what John's talking about here. Hey, it's John Tedisco. I'm here at Tile Bar Studio B. And guess what? It's Friday and it's happy hour all day. And I want to show you a product. It's actually a mosaic. The whole mosaic sheet, this is the actual format. It's a trapezoid. But it's made up of triangles, diamonds, and an actual trapezoid. And it's three colorways. Come check it out. So this is the Rosa. You'll see there's a Rosa marble in here. Nero Marquino, White Carrera, and a Verde. Really nice geometric pattern. This is very similar. No rose color, but we added like this little minky brown color. So all the same colors with the mink and no Rosa. Uh, this is called Verdana, and this is called the Grana, which is white and grays. Pretty much White Carrera, Bardiglio, all shades of white and grays. Really nice, really classic. So this is live on our website, order samples. This is John Tedisco. I'd like to wish you a happy, happy hour. Oh, yeah. John. Oh, switch places again. Hey, what are you doing over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Switch yeah, places. Yeah, I love, I love that material. That was a really nice one, nice uh, marble. And we were talking, well, since we're doing videos, you know, we're so engaged in our conversation, but this is the tile happy hour. Craig and I have this show every Tuesday, eight o'clock. We want you to chime in. We want you to follow us, send us questions. We do have uh, some requests. We request that if you could tell us where you're watching from, post it here, ask a question, tell your friends. Um, but also we have a few like uh, segments that we try to do every week. And once in a while, Craig has a pretty good video. And I know you may have have, you may have something to do with cleaners. Yeah. I think, with dealers. Um, I well, know. um, I just, uh, just made a video about the importance of sealers and that is part of the maintenance program. So I felt like it fit. And so I plucked out a little segment here to talk about sealers. Um, so let's, let's take a look at that. All right. Do you need to seal your tile or stone project? Do I need a sealer? Well, yes, maybe. A sealer is necessary for some installations. Let me tell you what those are. If you have a very porous tile, like a stone, you need a sealer. If you have a standard sanded or non-sanded grout, you need a sealer. If you have a brick or terrazzo or clay tile that doesn't have a glaze on it, you need a sealer. When do you not need a sealer? I don't normally recommend a sealer when you have a porcelain tile with an epoxy grout. On their own, they're pretty stain resistant. These sealers protect your tile and help you clean them. Is it stain proof after you apply the sealer? No, nothing is stain proof, but it gives you the opportunity to clean your system once an accident happens. Yeah, that was good hey. stuff. Yeah. 
that's uh and and the full video is up on um at tile the world on my youtube channel and i kind of go through a di some different parts of the how to use a sealer where to use a sealer and i tell you what my favorite sealer is ah yeah, the suspense is killing me, but you got to, people, you have to watch it. So, Greg, right. today we talk about we want to kind of get some of our normal things in here. Um, today is National Something Day. And I'm going to oh, start. Right. To... We have a, man, we just were going right along. We almost skipped all this stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, I'm going to try to stump Craig. So, as you know, every day there's National Something Day, and there's usually multiple things. And this is two truths and a lie, I kind of call it. So so today is National Edge Day, National Mulligan Day, and National Cork Day. Now, do you know what those three things are? Um, I know what a mulligan is. Um, I know what a cork is. I don't know what an edge is. I mean, I know the edge is a, a great guitarist. So uh, National Edge Day promotes a movement of youth refraining from using alcohol, tobacco, and other re recreational drugs. So that's a good day. Oh, and the fact that I'm reading the fact that I'm reading this, you're probably going to say that's a legitimate day today. <laughs> probably, uh, yes. So uh, Mulligan Day uh, and nat Natural Cork Day. Which one of those two is not today? Uh, I think uh, Mulligan Day is not today. Okay, in golf, a mulligan happens when a player gets a second chance to perform a specific move or action. The National Day offers an opportunity for giving yourself a second chance, or as some people call it, a do-over. Today is National Mulligan Day. Craig has been stumped once again by John Tedesco. Once again. Once That's again. One of my magic skills that I just have on my resume. <laughs> um, um, I do that. We, we've got a question here on um, TikTok. Okay, uh, and I have a LinkedIn and, uh, question too on my LinkedIn. So let's get to both of those. Okay, let's get to both of those questions. Uh, yes, uh, there are other sealers other than Laticrete Stone Tech. Um, we we just happen to carry the Laticrete Stone Tech, or John and I work at Talbar.com. Buy as much as you want today, as much as you can afford. Um, but uh, the question was, how long does the grout have to dry? before you seal it? Ah. That's a good question. So are you asking me? Well, I am, um, yeah, let, let me ask you, and uh, because this will be my uh, can I stump John question. Okay, all right, so let's do that. So it does depend on the type of grout. Um, okay. Historically, cementitious grouts, you were supposed to wait 24 hours to seal uh to seal it but then the sealers have evolved also so it's a complicated answer because some sealers are designed that are water-based sealers that allow the moisture that's escaping the grout to go through the sealer so there are sealers now i know i think um uh aquamix makes these seal that you can seal within a few hours uh, mm -hmm. but if it's an oil-based sealer probably not so the answer is I really don't know because it's too complicated of an answer. Well, <laughs> Tom got uh, it. Tom is screaming online. It depends. It depends. It depends. <laughs> and those are not just the shorts that John has to wear. Right. That is correct. <laughs> it does depend. Um, Tom, I don't know if you remember it, but I and I can't remember the name of the sealer. So if you remember, tell me. There was a sealer that came out that as soon as you got done cleaning the floor, you could spray it on your grout joints and. That was the only kind of sealer any tile contractor wanted because you didn't have to go back to the job. Right. That's pretty I cool. I'm not familiar with that. Seal, like a er, er, seal, sure seal. Yes, it had a seal on the packaging. Um, but you could seal the grout joints wet. And uh, But uh, I'm back, going back to the question, and Tom's answer is yes, it does depend. So you need to read the sealer instructions, and they will tell you um, most of them, I, I think, are going to say, and I've got one over there in my corner, but most of them are going to give you, they want they want the, the grout to be relatively dry. You know, before I, when I was telling, when I was saying about cementitious grouts, I was also alluding to, well, then epoxy grouts probably have different instructions. And I'm like, wait a minute, most of those don't even need a sealer. So the correct. real 
the real funky ones, the new, you know, advanced uh, grouts are, are one of the advantages of them that you, you do not use a seal. Not that you don't need it. Maybe you just don't need it. Yeah. It's, it's no, there's right. No yeah. The, yeah. And uh, I even say in the video that you need to go watch on my channel and like and comment and subscribe. Sorry to, for that shameless plug uh, is um, I don't, you don't need a grout if you've got a porcelain tile and epoxy, you, a porcelain tile and epoxy grout, you don't need a sealer. Right. And that's one of the few times I'll say, don't worry about it because the tile is impervious. The grout is impervious. You just need to learn how to clean it correctly. Right. So, um, but you know, there are, um, like, uh, for instance, permacolor select and some of the other, uh, high end grouts that have sealers built into them. Are they stain proof? No, nothing is stain proof. Nothing ever. Right. So I just want to touch, I just want to back up for a second. We talked about okay. how important it is to change the water when you're cleaning, but let's go back to the beginning of the show. You need to wring out that sponge when you're grouting uh, mm -hmm. and have multiple buckets of water because oh, that's yeah. you. If you want to just avoid this whole conversation of getting grout haze off, don't let the grout haze form to begin with i mean maybe you have a minimal amount but if you have a clean sponge and a clean buckets of water you can't grout with one bucket of water right and, and what you know you right. need to have multiple or you need to have helpers switching things out on you so that preparation it's like the painter he comes in and spends more time taping the room than he does painting sometimes yeah. so it, it look at it in that sense if you properly clean your floor while you're grouting uh, while you're removing the excess, uh, and again, light cleaning, damp sponge, you don't want puddles of water going into the freshly filled joints uh, yeah. of grout. So it's interesting how how cleaning grout is also similar in, in cleaning floors. So we did have another question from Gene Goldsmith on LinkedIn. While uh, you're finding that, uh, let me let me add to what you just said. Yeah. Is my mop bucket rule is the same thing as my grout bucket rule. When you can't see the bottom of the grout bucket, change the water. Yeah, exactly. Go with your question. So uh, Gene Goldsmith on tick, uh, no, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I had a well-known national steam cleaning company in my house mm -hmm. cleaning floors when they got to the bathroom floor tile, they realized the grout was coming off and said they couldn't clean it. What is the best way to clean that type of floor? So, I mean, the, the, the short answer is I understand why you're asking them to come and clean your grout or your floors, but the grout is, I visualize it's crumbling or coming out. So mm -hmm. if I were them, I would avoid cleaning that floor because they're probably just going to you know, exasperate whatever grout left. Yeah. Right. So then they're gonna get blamed for making the floor worse. So I would so my recommendation would be to A, well, if you really if you're just concerned about getting the floor clean and you want to just deal with whatever happens to the grout, then you can go ahead and just clean it however you were going to clean it and deal with the deal with the end result of agitating the grout. But mm -hmm. the, the real answer is is to scrape that grout out have a professional or do it yourself and scrape the grout out, regrout it, use a grout that doesn't need to be sealed or use a grout that does need to be sealed and seal it. And then when it comes time to clean the floor again, um, you don't have to worry about the, you know, the structural that's grout cool. coming out. Cause I think that's what I, that's what I read from that. Is that what you got? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, which leads me down a whole different rabbit trail is why is the grout coming out? You know, where's the failure? Uh, so was it grouted imp improperly? Was the grout too thin? Or is there movement in the place which caused the grout to crack, which therefore is causing it to come out? So there's an, there's an underlying installation problem because grout, unless, uh, Un unless something happens to it, it should stay in place and stay intact. Yeah, something's moving. It's either, like you said, too shallow. Have you ever seen people, oh, I just regrouted my bathroom. Did you scrape it out? No, no, I just like, you know, <laughs> went on top. And that looks great for like a, two weeks, right? And then downhill from there. <laughs> 
Yeah, but um, yeah, so there's something, something's going on that's causing the grout to crumble out or flake off. Um, there's, there's a failure somewhere. So you got to fix, you need to fix that first. But um, John, John, we've hit nine o'clock. I, I don't know if we covered everything, care and maintenance. I will add one thing before we say goodbye is you've purchased a tile or stone floor. You need to take care of it. It does require maintenance but probably not as much as you think. If you will do a continual, regular maintenance, it will keep the floor looking new. Follow the instructions that your tile professional gave you, gave you and uh, don't let it get too nasty and don't hire a cleaning company that is not following those same instructions. Yeah, I couldn't agree. And I want to reiterate one more time. If you need a sealer, if you need a cleaner, you should be talking to a tile professional, not the guy in the supermarket or the cleaning company. You think the cleaning companies are experts. The problem is they 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 clean everything and they cannot or they probably are not experts in everything. And and then don't go to the big chemical companies because they just like to slap labels on it. And yeah, you can clean your rug and you can clean your car and you can clean your tile and you can clean all these things with it. So you really need to be careful. Talk to a tile professional, someone that's seasoned, that knows about tile. There's a lot of innuendos. There's a lot of different products out there, a lot of you know, materials that are different, a lot of grouts and sealers and cleaners that are different. So absolutely, yeah. please check with a professional. And it, none of this is hard and none of this is expensive. It is costly when you get wrong advice and you take and you act on it. So um, it's been real fun talking to everybody. Been fun catching up with you, Craig. I'm glad we we're able to talk about this important topic. Uh, and this is John Tedisco. I'd like to wish everybody peace, health, and happiness. I agree with you, Tom. The show goes by too fast. and But we're just cruising right along. Uh, send us your topics. Maybe the topic you want to talk about is something that we can jump on. Thanks for everybody that were tuning in on TikTok. We're going to get John on here Follow the Tile channel. He's uh, up there. Um, click on him, follow him, share it. Don't forget, let's keep learning every day and tile the world.